I think you're going to find this uh, next guest very fascinating. I know uh, I do. We're going to be talking about solving the national debt problem as easy as A, B, C, D. G.J. Reynolds is his name, or affectionately known as G., a passionate entrepreneur, business developer, trainer, public speaker, author who thrives on teaching people how to improve their lives, very involved in business. He was in the telecommunications industry that uh, eventually acquired and or merged with Verizon. Uh, he has since owned and operated several successful telecommunications and business and marketing development companies. He has assembled and trained sales and marketing teams of greater than 50,000 people, specializing in working with like-minded entrepreneurs and professionals who choose to raise the bar for themselves and their businesses. But the footnote, if I may just call you G, is that what you're comfortable with? Yes, sir. It, interesting is... When you start reading the other part of your life, you had everything, you had a lot of stuff, but you became depressed and suicidal. While others saw greatness and accomplishment, I saw a sellout. While others saw success, I saw failure. Upon hitting rock bottom 10 years ago, you had a vision. God led him out of the darkness saying, you do not have a reason to die. You have a reason to live, and I will show you how. Since written a book called The Playful and Powerful Warrior Within You, what, how, how did you become, what, what did you, uh, what were you depressed about? And I know it's hard to ask people who suffer from depression because a lot of times it's not any one thing. But let, let's start there. What was that all about? Well, you know, with that intro, I was thinking, man, I've been a busy guy. Oh, yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I've had a lot going on in my life, and and uh, things were going great. And then I uh, I helped a, a a fellow entrepreneur. He owned most of the company, uh, to grow a company from pretty much nothing to over 120 million dollars a year. And uh, greed set in on his part, and arrogance, and he upset the regulators. And they told him, "Here's what you need to do." And he said, "Well, I'm not going to do it." So they showed him. And long story short, company went out out of business. Uh, and for the first time in my life, I was, you know, okay, I'll just get something else started, move forward, and nothing was happening. And, and over a period of time, it just, you know, no matter what I was doing, um, nothing was coming coming together. And it was like, the best way I can describe it is like being stuck in the uh, in the clay, you know, in the mud or the clay, and you got the wheel spinning, and you're unable to move or get out. And so that's sort of where I was at, and just over a period of time, just couldn't get anything going. And then I started realizing, you know, you know, I got got a lot of bills and stuff that I had to pay for, and next thing you know, I was unable to pay for it, and mm. and just spiraled out of control. And then the ego kicked in, as far as you know, the ego kicked in, and the opposite thing. Instead of saying, "Look at me," it was like, "Oh, how could I get to this point? Oh, poor me," versus "Go, oh, look at me," and. Um, Next thing you know, I was just at the you know at the bottom of, of the bowl, and and uh, fortunately, you know, I was able to turn things around. My book's all about the steps that worked for me to turn my life around again. And then, and then, what was good about it is that I've had more success. I've had more balance. It's been simpler. It's been easier, and I've been much more happier and much more focused. Uh, so now I look at it as a very good thing that actually happened to me, and it was a wake up call. And I also see it as a wake-up call to help other people to uh, go through whatever they're dealing with in their life. So you still, uh, ha the Lord is still a big part of your life, your focus. Most, most, most definitely. And and uh, one of the chapters in the book is put God first. And you know, I was I always was, was a big believer in God. However, I was I I use what I call let's make a deal theology. When I need you, I'm going to call upon you. When I don't need you, I've got it handled. And uh, mm -hmm. what I learned is no matter how much I think I may have it handled, he's got a better plan for me than I do. So, yeah, uh, I, most definitely. A lot of us, I'm just going to say, me, when I'm in trouble, I get a second opinion from God. You know, a second opinion? You know, it's like, what is that all about? We talked about that in a in a men's discipleship meeting I went to this morning. And he said, well, what are you doing at witnessing and things like that? And I said, well, 
uh, mostly through the radio show and guys like you who uh, show some real inspiration. However, uh, also in this book, I presume, is when we talk about, and it's going to sound like we're totally uh, shifting gears, but not necessarily, the national debt problem. Uh, solving the national debt problem, you say, is, is rather easy. You say as easy as A, B, C, D. So let's go down those. Well, just to be clear, my book has nothing to do with about solving the national debt. It's more on, on how to reclaim your own personal power, you know, it's, and whoever the reader is. Um, however, solving the national debt, we all realize, you know, just we'll turn on the TV and watch the news. Everything is about where the economy is, where jobs are at. And you know where's the economy going or not going, and how do we get a control of it? And and the first step is everybody understands we have to get a good hold of the debt and quit spending more than what we're you know we're taking in and get a control of that. And obviously, you know everybody agrees with that. And there's and as an entrepreneur, I look at things from a business perspective. Mm-hmm. So if we just looked at our economy from a business perspective and then start applying those into our you know, government, um, or to, you know, having our congressmen start uh, using the same uh, philosophies that are proven laws and principles of success in business, then we can overcome that. Now, how do we do that? Obviously, we're talking about jobs, and and, and Obama just talked about you know his job plan and so forth, and and <clears throat> a lot of it, in my opinion, is you know they're focused on the wrong thing. And, the, and where we got to get back to is we got to create jobs versus uh, you know cutting different things which are, are going to help the debt. It's all about creating jobs. And how do you create jobs? You've got to you've got to um, produce and uh, um, and develop products and services within within the United States versus having everything go overseas. And the reason everything's going overseas that we once did here is because we've taxed or we've made it so uneconomical for the average business to succeed here, and so it's cheaper to go somewhere else. Yep. We've got to get a hold of that. So so the number one thing is we've got to create revenue, and no one in the media or any of our politicians are talking about increasing revenue. The only way they're talking about increasing revenue is taxes, taxes, taxes. Well, taxes is one, one portion of it. However, when you've got a, a striving and thriving businesses, then you're going to have revenue. And then from that revenue, you're going to create a tax base. And then from those, from a thriving business, you're going to create jobs. So why not incentivize these companies to create jobs and give them benefits? So if I create 10 jobs, I might get more benefit than if you have a company that creates 100 jobs. So yeah. we, we start. No, go ahead. I don't want to interrupt. So, so it's back to creating uh, products and services within the United States. And and then and being able to be compete compete within the U.S. and and you know North America and then obviously we can worry about going overseas and competing there later. Um, so that's number one. And then step, step two is um, uh, you know we also got to get a handle on on the health side of things. And the health side is all those costs keep going up. And then Medicare is, is is a big issue. So if we get proactive. Um, and solving that, you know, health issues before they become issues, we also reduce the strain on, you know, uh, programs like Medicare and, and so forth. And right now, obesity is a $450 billion strain on our economy a year just from, from the, the effects of obesity. Mm-hmm. Of course, that, that tentacles out to even more dollars if you look at other areas that can be rooted back to obesity. So, so those are things <laughs> that we have to look at and really start focusing on instead of all the rhetoric and all the taxing and, and the, the political stuff. And, and how do we get, get a hold of that? we got to get the people to stand up and, and, and communicate with their local state and, and uh, national um, representatives. Yeah, and I see some uh, parallels here as you talk about this. You want to create jobs, opportunity in the USA, and produce products and services within the USA and stop uh, sending jobs uh, overseas. And I wonder if a lot of that isn't the regulations that we have to live with. I realize that there is cheap labor making the Nike shoes in the Kathy Lee Gifford sweatshop. That was a big story. Um and I, I see that as well, but I also see, and, and I want your reaction to this, 
The government doesn't make money. The IRS doesn't even make money. My biggest tenant, and I don't think anybody has really disagreed with this, find out what programs are redundant, find out what areas of certain agencies are wasteful, and find out how we can localize more of what we do so this money is accountable. I mean, I read yesterday 150 billion no, 180 billion dollars was lost in social uh, unemployment, excuse me, in unemployment last year, and it's just so big and it's just so out of control. And unfortunately, uh people like you and I, uh fiscal conservatives, the uh, opposition says, well, you don't even believe in un- unemployment insurance. So you don't believe in disability. Uh, you don't believe in, in Medicaid. You don't believe in bridge cards. And th- that's not true. That's not true at all. Uh, I think we need all of those programs. I just think to a large extent they're being abused. Uh, your reaction? Well, I would definitely say uh, we definitely have to have an accountability go back to the first point is, is there's got to be an accountability and there are redundancy and, and redundant programs and whether there's redundancy means there's waste and then what are we able to streamline and as an entrepreneur you know I, I want to run a business that's streamlined I want to run a business that's profitable and and, and can grow fast and, and be able to provide good benefits to the people that are helping helping make that company grow and help uh, incentivize people to do that and obviously, you know, different perks, you know, some of those programs that you're talking about, you know, are, are necessary. However, um, we've become negligent as a society, and we've allowed it, and it's, it's something that's happened over years and years and years to get us to where we're at. And now we have to really, are we going to buck up? And, you know, I've gone into companies that were struggling and had to make cuts, had to, to uh you know, look at what is working, what is not working. What do we need to tweak? What do we need to get rid of altogether hmm. in order to save the company? Otherwise, you got a company that's going to go out of business, and every time a business goes out of business, then what happens? You've lost revenue and you've lost, you've lost jobs, which now there's a strain on. So if you've got people that are un- unemployed, what are they going to do? They're going to go and collect unemployment. So now you've got a, a, a strain on the economy. Hmm. So it goes back to being efficient being direct and uh, getting back to what is good, sound business principles. And, you know, I'll give an example, and this may sound a little self-serving, is that my company, which is Vitalis Sciences, you know, we, we, are, we're on a, we do about $250 million a year, and we went for, from 2009 almost not making it because of the struggles of the economy. Everything changed. The consumer mindset changed. And so we had to look at the company in every aspect what are we going to do to one to survive? Two, how are we going to move forward? Now, you fast forward it, you know, two year, almost two years later, uh, from on the brink of going out of business, to <clears throat> we will become a billion dollar company in the coming years. And so, h- how do we do that? We had to look in every nook and cranny. We also had to find ways to incentivize people who are helping make decisions so that they would make the right decision and move forward. And uh, the other good thing about our company is we do everything within the United States. We produce our products and services in the United States, which creates jobs, and then we, we help people on a health standpoint on a 90-day challenge, and we stimulate some of the health side of things. So we're doing basically what I, I shared earlier, uh, and if more companies were allowed to do that and, and were incentivized to do that, then we can turn this economy around. I had a uh, sister-in-law who would go, her job was to go into companies, uh, small, medium-sized companies, and her job was to uh, spend, I don't know, two weeks, four weeks studying the entire business, looking at every single aspect, contacting specialists in their field of this, uh, of a company, and she made a ton of money. Here's how she did it. She came into a company and says, I want 10% of what I can save you annually. Just one-time payment. I want 10% of what I can save you. And she made, uh, oh, well, into the six figures because she could take an objective look. Uh, And is that similar to what you did? You do? Well, well, I I have done that. and, and, And typically how I've got involved in those companies that were 
where I did some of that is that I was looking at either being, you know, involved as a equity partner or an investor. And uh, so obviously, obviously, I want to make sure if I'm going to do that, I'm going to have a company that's going to to be around so I can benefit for you know whatever I'm going to put into it, whether it's my time or money. And so I did that indirectly. It wasn't my job. And uh, and it's amazing how many companies can do that. And over time, most companies, as they evolve, um, they get a little off track. And sometimes somebody like your sister goes in. It's a it's a um, it's a uh, un- it's an objective mind looking at what's going on, and that's what we've got to have with the economy and the government. And the question is, are our politicians going to allow it, allow that to happen, or that, or are we going to continue to go down the greed path? And um, things are going to get worse. Well, and the government too is not necessarily uh, worried so much about the bottom line. They 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 drag their feet. They push the kick the can down the road with Medicaid. They've done it with Social Security, uh, Medicare, and now and and here's the epitome of it. Gee, I don't get this. Is the post office the United States post office has known that they're going to be facing a financial crisis for years and years? Now they're talking about discontinuing Saturday mail service. Well, why? What? No company would wait to be on the brink of bankruptcy or in need of a bailout to make some serious changes. So I, I just think that the private enterprise. Uh, it, it needs to get involved in some of these uh, government agencies and say, let's take a look at it. There's one thing about radio stations, and I'm, I'm not referring to this one, but if I was ever a radio station consultant, I wouldn't want to meet the employees who are on the air because sometimes we we keep people in this industry, again, not the station, who aren't necessarily that good at what they do. They're wonderful people. Everybody loves to be around them. They're just jovial. They're just, they're not right for the job. And once you get to meet the people, then they suck you in and go, yeah, Joe, Joe's great. We we love Joe. Yeah, he doesn't produce, and I know we don't necessarily need his position, but gosh, we love Joe. And uh, and I think the government is is even worse at doing that. I I am out of time. I want to reiterate the book, the uh, playful and powerful warrior within you. Uh, sounds like it's very very motivational and uh, might make um, a good gift or a great read. Uh, where do people get it? Well, they can go to powerfulwarrior.com dot com or any bookstore or online service, you know, iBooks, Amazon, and they can go to my personal website, simplyg.net. Simplyg.net. Oh, it is called simplyg.net. Yes, sir. Okay, very good. Uh, thank you so much for being with us, uh, true inspiration, and, uh, and God bless you. Thanks for being with us. Thanks a lot, Norm.